And today we have a Heathkit SB210. This is a station monitor. Um, I just picked this one up. Oh, no, I had to check how much it was. It was like 28 bucks. I mean, it was a steal. Um, dirty, but actually in very good condition. Yeah, it's got a... <laughs> definitely has some <laughs> dirt monsters on it, but actually, like I say, it's in very good physical condition. Actually, the cover... Make a little room to get that into the picture. Cover's not dented and dinged up. Yeah, it's got a few, you know, scratches in the paint and whatnot. But overall, yeah, there's no dents or dents in it whatsoever. So that can easily be refinished. But uh, it was sold as a non-working unit. <clears throat> and I always like to see stuff like this. You plug it in and you put it on a Variac and turn it on and absolutely nothing happens. Um, which is something I usually don't do with tube type equipment, but I thought for the amount of money I had, and I just turn it on and see if it has any current draw while I'm bringing it up on the Variac. Dead, completely dead, which is a good thing because that's usually major, or well, actually minor fault, but in a major way. And it looks like I am lucky. It is a very now it's going to need to be completely restored, all the capacitors replaced. You know, it needs a lot of work. You know, to bring it up to actually put it into uh, service. Let me get my bench cookies under here to jack it up. That way it's not sitting on the picture tube. Stalk. Be the last thing we want to do. But uh, it would look like the... Uh, <laughs> the problem is this fuse right here. And it's not that it blew. It looks like all it actually is. It's just from age. The... Uh, solder deteriorated because this is a slow blow fuse if we can get it in the picture or not yeah the, the actual l you know wire is so thin but i can i can actually see it the it's just the solder gave way where that wire attaches right there you can see it bouncing around in there actually it flaked off so the fuse didn't actually blow it just kind of fell apart <laughs> Which, like I say, that's a good thing. Because you have to remember these things have a little bit of like spring tension on them. So, yep, it just uh, just fell apart. Good thing. And it looks like it's, uh, you know, the actual unit itself, electronically. Like I say, all the caps, everything here is going to have to be replaced. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts. But, uh, shoot, other than that, it's in really good shape. It's put together well. Um doesn't look like there's any I'm just looking around here any unsoldered connections which is something you commonly find on Heath kits or any kit equipment um, well, like I say it's neat put together well I may actually just go ahead and let's actually see this takes a MDL half oh, what the heck I mean cover out the way. Uh, let's see, MDL half. Get a nice shiny new fuse here. Better flip back over. And I'm not going to leave it on for any... If it does power up, I'm not going to leave it on for any extended period of time. There's no doubt a capacitor will <laughs> is going to let go anytime soon. Because uh, I can see some of them are starting to get a little of the electrolytics. They're getting a little bubbly on the ends. Okay. There we have power cord hooked up. Turn it on. Let's see. Focus halfway. Vertical. Positions. Okay, I do have that turned on. That's intensity. Crank it up to half. Turn the power supply on. Aha! We have current draw. Half amp at. Uh, what are we at? 50 volts now. And 
as the tubes warm up, and I'm sure the electrolytic capacitors <laughs> are slowly form reforming because the current draw is dropping, dropping. if we're going to get up high enough before that fuse blows or not. <laughs> mm. I do see the filaments and all the vacuum tubes are lit. I don't know if that shows up in the camera or not. See all the little orange dots there. Yeah, it's definitely dusty. So it's been sitting for a long time. And we do have the indicator light is on now. And actually the current draw looks like it's down to about a quarter amp now. And I'll be darned. Haha, <laughs> I see a dot on the screen. And we're only at uh, about 70 volts. I can really, really faintly see... See that little guy right there. I can move it up and down. And left and right. Turn the voltage up some more. Yeah, the capacitors are definitely reforming because <laughs> current drain has dropped dramatically. Lord knows how many decades it's probably been since they've had any electricity going through them. <laughs> there you can see the dot. Well, that's all I really need to see. CRT is good. I'm going to assume everything probably works just fine. I have to see if the, uh, turn that off. That's, it has a built-in tone generator for when you, you know, to check your modulation package. It has one, it's one that's set at 1.5 kilocycles and then has a double tone built into it. And we're back down to a quarter amp again and we're at 80 volts. A hundred. I've got the, and we're at about, and it's dropping down a little more, and we're still hovering between a quarter and a half amp. I'm going to say this thing probably works just fine. Okay. Centering is actually perfect. I mean, that's damn, damn close to <laughs> perfect. You think about it. There's straight up and down the arrow, and straight up and down the arrow, and the dot's only here, so it's only off one, one division this direction, and a little bit over a half division left. So that's really, really close to being dead center. And I can tell they're dirty because it's bouncing around when I move them. And they're... So, <laughs> looks like that was a good steal. <laughs> $28 and, God, it was only like 12 I think $12 shipping. So, what, 40 bucks total? Um, for what looks to be a working SB610. So, I guess actually the next thing... Uh, I'll pause the video here. I'll actually hook up a radio and uh, see if we can actually get... Uh, Get it to monitor. <laughs> so give me a second here and we'll get something hooked up. I wasn't actually planning on it actually working. Well, without me digging out another radio to put at the bench, and this isn't exactly meant to be used with a CB radio because they really don't have enough drive power for one of these things. You have to remember this is designed for ham, you know, for amateur radio. I think the specs on these, I think 10 watt, I think was supposed to be the minimum input on these. But I just happened to have my bench test radio here from a previous uh, repair job I was using. So, ah, what the hell, hook it up. Usually you can get a little bit of a waveform. Actually, I can get a fairly good waveform on this one. So, key the mic, audio check. So, 
so you can see it actually does work um actually see, <laughs> it seems to be working pretty good and i'm actually only running at uh, i think about 110 volts at the moment but uh the uh station monitor appears to be station monitoring so there you go <laughs> uh, let's see Controls are dirty as, oh my god, they're horrible, but, uh, they're very jumpy. Audio check, audio. Oh yeah, actually, <laughs> I'm going to say win. So... Like I say, I think it, I think it was twenty eight dollars and uh, twelve dollars shipping, so yeah, forty bucks <laughs> a working Heathkit SB uh, six ten. The only thing I need to do is restore it now. Don't need to diagnose anything for once in my life. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Miracles do happen. Well, I thought, what the heck? Before I completely put it back together, stick it on the shelf, and. God knows when I'll ever get to restoring it. I thought, well, I'll give it an initial cleaning. Actually, I'm not going to refinish the cabinet. <laughs> it actually cleaned up really well. Um, I was surprised. Uh, and I can say with certainty, it belonged to a smoker. Um, I speak from experience. I used to smoke. Don't anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, it had its, it had a layer of, you know, tar and nicotine on it, um, I use a really good cleaner made by uh, Texas Refinery Corporation. Uh, you know, it doesn't take hardly any of that stuff, you know, diluted in water in a spray bottle. But man, I sprayed that on the cabinet while I had it off. It just, uh, it's like a sheet. It just detaches about a second later. Just whoosh, it kind of slides off. Cleaned that off. So actually, that cleaned up really well. It's got a little bit of a ding, or not ding, it's not not in the metal, it's just, you know, the finish is a little bit missing right there, but other than that, there's a few paint imperfections, it can stay as is. Um, you know, that's patina. I mean, if you're as old as this thing is, I'm sure you don't look and feel like you did when you were brand new, so, you know, no use hiding, hiding it, you know. Like I say, it gives it gives it a little bit of character, but the faceplate, man, that cleaned up really, really nice. Got all that goop off of there. Then, and like I say, this I didn't do a good cleaning. It was just a quick spray and a rub down with a microfiber towel. But yeah, it cleaned up really nice. So these knobs will actually clean up even better. I can still see there's a little bit of haze down around between you know where this black meets the aluminum rings. But the trim ring, you know, the knob brights, they're all perfect. There's really not a scratch to speak of in any of them. They're all in really good shape. So yeah, <laughs> that that was a really good price. Like I said, it worked out to about forty dollars, I think. So man, that's nice, nice, nice. So yep, yeah, I can't stand having nasty looking shit sitting on the shelf, even if it you know does need to be restored. Um, so I thought I'd give her a quick wipe down, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like, you know, now that it's back together. So you can see, like I say, really nice shape. There you go, the Heathkit SB610.